Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <clears throat> Whenever you're looking at this message, uh, welcome to a weekly message from one of the elders. Uh, uh, it was my turn in the barrel this week, and uh, I'd like to uh, read some stuff to you today from um, from the book of Ecclesiastes. But first, I find it uncomfortable as, in a way to, uh, uh, to teach and uh, in front of this camera. When I look in this camera, I, I kind of look for my, my, my good side, and uh, I'm afraid I'm just out of good sides, and that's just the way it, it is. And uh, I accept it, kind of. Uh, second, I'm in this time of crazy, crazy times that we, we, we live in, uh, I'm, I'm thankful to be sequestered with somebody I like. Uh, we've We've had plenty of lunches throughout the uh, the last few weeks in, in parking lots throughout Lancaster County, whether it be from um, Olive Garden or the Texas Roadhouse or Longhorns. We order in and um, I find a nice parking spot where we can watch the cars go by and we, and we have lunch. Uh, it's, been, it's been different, but it's been good nonetheless. Uh, we've had some good times talking uh, together about, uh, about our youth. Uh, uh, this is how we kind of started our youth uh, back when we were married uh, a number of years ago. Uh, we were always together in a car doing something, so it's uh, it's been fun. Um, different, but fun. I was looking at, a, a, um, you know, there's a lot of memes that, that come, come your way now with this, uh, uh, in regards to this virus and, and people that are just stuck at home. And uh, I, th I saw a cute one that I thought it would made, made me laugh. And it said, with all the things that are canceled or postponed lately, I've decided to talk to my wife last night. She seemed nice. <laughs> I, get the, I get the impression that uh, uh, the thought process that went into that meme was uh, he didn't get much time to talk with his wife or chose not to talk with his wife. But uh, he's, you know, sometimes life has got a way of uh, keeping us busy. Uh, with family and friends, but uh, sometimes we, we kind of miss the boat on things that uh, we need to do and spend more time with. Uh, this morning, or I guess yesterday, I had a little blurb for the, for the newsletter, and it comes out of the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, I've been reading a lot of the Ecclesiastes and, and, and putting meaning to uh, applying it to my life over this past few weeks. And it's been an interesting read for me. And uh, I'd like to read some, some excerpts, or some scripture from the book of Ecclesiastes. You know, the author, uh, uh, King Solomon, it said in 1 Kings, it says he, he, was, he was wiser than any man in Egypt. And the God gave him extraordinary wisdom, more than any man. So we're talking about somebody that had a lot of wisdom in his writings, and uh, something that we can learn from what he has to say uh, and apply it, and again, especially in, in these crazy times in which we live. He says, uh, he says the author looks about, I, I've jotted some notes down, uh, the author, King Solomon, looks about the, the human enterprise and he sees a man in mad pursuit of one thing and then another, laboring as he could, the phone. There's another distraction. Laboring as he could, he could master the world, but yet lay bare its secrets. Solomon was always about trying to do something. Uh, he had everything. He had everything there was to, to have. Uh, uh, God had blessed him with many material blessings. Uh, but faith teaches Solomon, both us, uh, that God has ordered all things according to his own purpose. Is God's purpose, not man's purpose, or even the fellow that's got the most wisdom in, in more than any man. Uh, God's purpose will be done, uh, and it's centered on God. So uh, a couple of things that I wanted to speak this morning about, or this afternoon, or this evening, however you, wherever, or however you, uh, whenever you, you, you hear this message. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1 the, the, the writer, King Solomon, he starts off right away with the, <laughs> what a way to start a book. It's meaningless, meaningless. 
says the teacher, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. And he says this all with exclamation points in your, in your Bible when you, when you look. And he's, he's profound when he says that it's, he says, what, what does a man gain from all his labor and which he toils under the sun? You know, uh, in, in these times when we're, uh, we're expecting the, the job market to start opening up and maybe people going back to work and people itching to go back to work. And I understand that. Uh, but uh, Solomon says, uh, people have been doing that forever. Uh, generations come, generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and it hurries back to where it rises. Then the wind blows to the, uh, to the, to the south and it turns to the north and around and around it goes. Uh, you know, kind of where it stops, nobody knows. And every, ever returning on its course and all streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full to the place the streams come from and where they return from. All things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear is full of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Uh, I thought that was interesting. That, that verse always sticks with me in my mind. I, I think of, uh, this, again, these times that we're living in. I'm 67. I've never experienced... Uh, being sequestered in a house, uh, being told by government to stay in the house, not to go out, uh, fear of my own health. Uh, this is something new for myself, and it's, it's, it's new for many of you, and I don't think anybody's experienced any of this uh, up, up to this point. But Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun. All this has happened at one time before. Uh, the earth still spins it's spilled, it's the, the, uh, the stream still empty into the sea. The sea never fills. The sun comes up. The moon comes out. The stars come out. God has provided this uh, for us. Uh, he says it's, it's all happened before. Solomon says in, in chapter 2, the, uh, the, the Solomon, he says, I undertook great projects. This man had, had experienced so much. I've, I've undertook great projects. I've built houses for myself. I've planted vineyards. I've made gardens and parks. I've planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made reservoirs of water groves of flourishing trees. I brought male and female slaves. I bought male and female slaves and had other slaves who were born in my house. I also owned more herds and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me amassed silver and gold for myself and the treasure of kings and providences. I acquired men and women singers and a harem as well. The delights of the heart of man, I became greater by far than anyone in all of Jerusalem before me. And all this, my wisdom stayed with me. He says, I've denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my work. And this was all the reward for all my labor. Yet, when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless. A chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. Wisdom and folly are meaningless, he says. Toil is meaningless. He said there's a time for everything. A time to be born, a time to die. You know the story. A time to plant, a time to uproot. A time to kill, a time to heal. Uh, there's a time for everything in our lives. Uh, various things that we experience, uh, new things that we experience, uh, some old things that uh, reoccur on, on, on occasion. Uh, everything, there's a time for everything. A time for war, a time for peace, a time for love, a time for hate, a time to be silent, a time to speak. But he says, I know that everything God does will endure forever. Through this and uh, uh, King Solomon says that. He says, I know that everything God does will endure forever, ever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken from it. God does it so that men will revere him. Uh, why does God do all of this? Why, why, is, why does he make the earth spin? Why does he, the stars come out? Why does the the, uh, the the sun comes up at a specific time of the year? Why do the high tides, low tides? Uh, it's all specific that God does it so that men would revere him. Uh, and not be afraid that God, this has all been done before. Nothing's new under the sun, he said. 
uh, these viruses and, and, and various struggles that we go through. It's all, it's all been done before. Uh, and somehow God, uh, we survived through, through hardships and, and, and toil and uh, stress and strain, anxieties. But we, we power through it. Where God has given us the ability to power to, through it, he says he won't give us more than we can bear. Uh, he goes on to say in chapter 4, advancement is meaningless. He says whoever loves money never has enough money. Isn't that true? Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless. God, God's... Uh, uh, Solomon says all these things that he found to, to, be, to be meaningless. Uh, I want to leave you with this. This is, uh, I wanted to tell you uh, specifically, there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, what we're experiencing now is nothing new. It's, uh, it's happened before, probably at some time, maybe that we can't remember, or uh, in times past, it's all happened before. Even to the severity, uh, who knows how severe it is. It, it's experts tell you one thing one day and the next day uh, masks are good one day masks are bad the next day uh, vice versa one expert tells you one thing one expert tells you another thing who knows what to believe but we know we know that god is our rock we we stand on the rock uh god never changes uh, uh, but the in the conclusion of the matter it says in chapter 12 of ecclesiastes which is a beautiful book spend some time with this book it's a, it's a good read and it's encouraging for you he says not the teacher, in, in the conclusion of the matter, he says, the, wise of the, the words of the wise are like goads. They, they're collected sayings like firmly embedded nails given by one shepherd, but be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them. On making money books, there is no end, and much study wearies the body. Sometimes we look at the news, we look at various news stations, one tells me one thing, one tells me another, trying to find out the... Uh, how many people have died from this virus as opposed to many people have died from the, the flu in typical years? You, 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 can, you can go nuts trying to figure this out. He's, but he says, Ecclesiastes says, now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. He says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or whether it is evil. So, church family, uh, uh, I can't wait to give you a hug. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, I don't know who will shun me when I attempt to give you a hug. Uh, who will embrace me when I give you a hug? That's just my nature. I've been that, like that since I'm a since a kid. Uh, that I've um, I greet each other with a holy kiss. I don't know if that'll ever happen again. I don't know. Hopefully, some of you uh, embrace it. Some of you won't. I, I know myself is, uh, I long for that. So uh, I love each and every one of you. I hope you uh, stay safe. Uh, be confident in the fact that our names are written in the book of life. Uh, we're heaven bound. Uh, I lost a dear friend this morning. I heard this morning uh, uh, a, fr a friend for over 30 years, 35 years. Uh, she was a good friend that uh, passed uh, uh, and is now heaven bound. Uh, her, her hope is was built on the rock. Uh, the gift that she received was through uh, the gift of uh, Jesus. But nothing that she did, but the gift that she received was was through him. So that's our hope. That's our rock. That's our salvation. Things come. Things go. Everything that's happened now has happened before. Uh, with much love. Uh, Jim Bledsoe hopefully will give you a lesson of some type next week. Uh, and with that, I'm going to say goodbye, and I can't wait to uh, see you uh, soon. With love, I love you all. I love the church as much as you love the church. Till we meet again, God bless you.